Hey, it's Michael Costa. This is the Tennis Anyone podcast. It's Wednesday, October 30th. How we doing? You can watch us on YouTube. Some of you are watching us on YouTube right now. Thank you for leaving a rating and a review. Thank you for supporting me when I host The Daily Show. Thank you for buying tickets to my live shows. The next live show is in Washington, D.C. at the Kennedy Center, November 23rd. We have a first show and a second show. Tickets are selling fast. It's a month away. If you want to go, buy your tickets now, michaelcosta.com. Also, my book, you can pre-order it. Holy shit, so much self-promotion. I just want to get it out of the way. You can pre-order my book, Lucky Loser, Adventures in Tennis and Comedy comes out March 11th, but you can order the book now as a gift, as a holiday gift. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Diwali is this Friday. I don't know what Diwali is. Diwali. Meaning. Diwali, also known as Dipavali and the Hindu Festival of Lights is one of India's most widely celebrated holidays. I can't think of a better gift to give somebody for Diwali, India's Festival of Lights, than a link to I already purchased this book that'll be out March 11th. It's a long way away. But I also get I also get what they're doing. They want people to buy it. They want to know how many they should print. They must have already been the printing. I don't know. Anyways, thank you for supporting me. Uh, great podcast today. I don't really want to talk about the Trump rally at MSG. Uh, I don't even want to talk about the comedian that was up there. I know him. Um We've worked together many, many times. I think what's more important than his roasty, bad jokes is that there was people on that show, rally, that were actually politicians that were saying terrible shit. Um, I don't know why they booked, quote-unquote, that comedian... Um, I think it does say a lot about Donald Trump and that party that they thought that was, you know, that speaks to their people. I, I am not mad at the comedian. I know him. He's always done offensive stuff. He first pissed people off when he had a special and he, he made a fake billboard and posted it as if it was like this big billboard on Sunset Boulevard. He's definitely good at getting people to say his name and talk about him. Um, but man, are the jokes bad and racist. Um, but also, if you follow roast comedians and, you know, it's fun to watch roast comedians. I do think it's also often can be Lois hanging fruit take racial stereotype but it's also it's also fun it's also fun to rip on everybody the same amount um what blows me away is that everyone is seems to be more mad at the comedian than the politicians who are saying crazy shit than donald trump who we talk about fascism all the time but fascism is not a good thing hitler was a fascist pol pot was a fascist saddam saddam hussein was a fascist um, they use the military against their own people who are who speak out against them. They other other groups of people, typically minorities. They say it's their fault. It's their fault. Does it sound familiar? They constantly talk about how their country is declining. The only person that can save them is them, the strong man. Yet also this strong man who's a billionaire is also just like us and is for the people. Um, Bill Clinton said it very well in the Democratic National Convention speech. Pay attention to how often Trump says I when most politicians say you or we. Man, Kamala had a burn yesterday. What did she say? Um, he's going to come in the Oval Office with an enemies list. I'm going to come in the Oval Office with a to-do list. Thought that was a nice sound bite. Um, so 
I, uh, it's very, yeah, I, I, you know, my, my big takeaway from the comedian at the Trump rally was get the comedian off the stage. He shouldn't have been there in the first place. Tony, it's okay to say no to stuff. Uh, I'm sure they asked other comedians who said, no, I don't want to do that shit. That's not, that's not the right place. Um, nothing gets more misunderstood than when a comedian does comedy in the wrong venue. Uh, but here, everyone's talking about him. That's what he wanted. Instead, I would say, why don't we question why this party hired that person, thought this would be a good idea, using a comedian, does it lessen the seriousness of fascist remarks? Hey, relax, we also had a comedian. Oh, chill out, you're taking this too seriously. We also had a comedian. Probably, probably. Um, you know, Julia, I, I don't even know who the other speakers were. I just saw the clips, but these were like elected officials. Um, and keep in mind, you know, the, I don't have my phone on me. The New York Times had uh, run some very interesting quotes from people that had worked with the Trump administration that said terrible, terrible things about them. And it got it dawned on me that, uh, you know, John Kelly saying he had this uh, Trump had this affinity for Hitler and he's a fascist. Those guys don't need a Trump pardon, right? Giuliani is trapped. He just had to give up his World Series championship rings. Why does Giuliani have those? Everything over $1,000, Rudy Giuliani has to forfeit to these two women in Georgia because he lost a $150 million lawsuit for trying to overthrow the, the federal election and within the election within the state of Georgia, which I don't know why Trump hasn't faced any of these issues yet. Hopefully he will. Um, but keep in mind, everyone who's up there kissing Trump's ass needs a Trump pardon, right? So that's, that's why it's kind of interesting when John Kelly uh, starts talking shit about Trump. It's like, oh, you don't need him. You can actually tell the truth. Um, so I don't like people commenting on comedy when a comedian does comedy in a venue that isn't right for comedy. That being said, the comedian shouldn't be there. That being said, the jokes are bad. Bad comedy is bad comedy, okay? I'm not saying this is good comedy, but I am saying a roast comedian roasts shit. What would be great and what would have give, given him more credibility is if he would have roasted some of the people standing behind him, if he would have roasted Trump and then roasted Puerto Rico. Um, Don Rickles roasted everybody, but what, is, what does Don Rickles have that almost every other roast comedian doesn't? He's likable. You feel like he's on your side. There's a twinkle in his eye. Uh, a roast comic who isn't likable is an asshole punching down. A roast comic who's cute, and likable that you want to have drinks with is your buddy who likes to talk shit sometimes. Goof, goof around. So uh, that was a mistake. We'll see how this plays out. I hope people really just back up, take a bird's eye view, and say, what does it say about a party that wants to hire this person, that, identif that thinks that their audience likes this? And then I would also say the thing that John Stewart always says, which is, um, why don't you hold a politician, an elected official, a judge, a lawyer, to this same standard you're holding a comedian to? Because nobody in their goddamn mind, at least for now, although uh, the Ukrainian guy was a comedian, um, no one's electing comedians to office yet. So... That's my take. I'm getting a lot of messages on Instagram. People saying, how dare you support this guy? How dare you follow him? I didn't even know I did follow him. But um, I'm not going to shit on him. I've already said his comedy's bad, but I'm not going, you know, it, it, I, I've said what I've said. I've said what I've said. He did what a roast comedian does at a rally and everybody fl flip the fuck out when really we should be assessing what Trump said and what the other elected officials said or those running for office said. Uh, 
there's a squirrel in my attic. Got to figure that out. I ordered a trap. How do I know it's a squirrel? I've known it's been a loud animal for a while and thought it was a mouse. Put down a lot of mouse stuff. Peanut butter's always gone. The trap had gone off. There was no mouse. So finally, I was like, I got these fucking motion sensor cameras. What am I doing? So I put the camera down right on the mouse trap. Uh, wake up the next day, 5 a.m. with a notification. And it's a squirrel. Boom. Just staring right at me, looking at the light. Thought it was a chipmunk. Reassessed. Flat tail. Did a squirrel versus chipmunk. Google search. Um, and yeah, so we got a squirrel. And... Um, I'm getting the humane trap, which this blows my mind. If I even know how to set this thing, if I do it right, should be coming soon. Um, you're supposed to catch the squirrel. You're supposed to drive him 10 miles away. What? What? I th can't you just cross a river? 10 miles away or they will come back. And by the way, this motherfucker has been up there a while because I hear him in the walls sometimes. So I, I bet you he's got a stash of nuts. I bet my boy, if I don't take him 10 miles away, he's coming back. Any advice on how to catch a squirrel? I've had people had squirrels in their chimneys. Um, I had a raccoon on my roof once. That was a pain in the ass. I love nature until it's in your house, right? We all love nature. Nature's great. It helps balance our lives until it's in our house. Any advice on what to do with a squirrel? My brother wants me to kill it. I'm not ready for that yet. Uh, my father, back in the day, he had so many chipmunks were eating the house. He had this like electronic chipmunk electrocutor. <laughs> and it would be green. There's a green light on it. And then uh, it would just be a red light. And that meant you got something. Or my mom would say, you would know that there was something there because the tail would hang out. And it's really sad, right? God damn it. I hate killing stuff. You don't have to. You don't have to kill it. Don't kill it. But it's also a funny idea to think somebody 10 miles away from me is catching a squirrel and driving it to my neighborhood. It's like the old Brian Regan joke. Two log trucks passing each other on the highway. Well, if you need logs over there and I need logs over here. So obviously there's someone 10 miles away who's got a squirrel in their attic. I've got a squirrel in my attic. We're both going to trap it, hopefully. And then drive them to each other's neighborhoods. The squirrels are going to talk to each other, tell each other what to do, and then they're just going. This guy's going to take this guy's nuts, and that guy's going to take that guy's nuts. The cycle continues. Um, what else? Paris is happening. I'll tell you what. Oh, I'll be in D.C. Did I just say that? November twenty third, two shows, Kennedy Center. The real reason I wanted to turn on the podcast today, we're, you know, the election's coming up. I already voted. Make sure you vote. It feels good when you vote. Is this guy. Giovanni Pecci Pericard. Pecci Pericard. Because I haven't, you know, I am always watching. Tennis Channel's always on. But watching. Giovanni Pecci Pericard. Giovanni Pecci Pericard. Watching him play. Ranked 31 in the world. By the way, where did this guy come from? He just moved up 19 spots. I thought I knew a lot about tennis. I had not seen Pecci Pericard play. And if you haven't seen, Google it right now. It is one of those players that when you see him play, you can't stop looking at it. It's like a Ben Shelton. It's like a Carlos Alcaraz. It's like a Rafael Nadal. I'm not saying he's going to have those same results. But the serve he hits is unbelievable. I saw him hit a body serve against Ben Shelton in the finals of, what was this that he won? Was it Switzerland? Basel, Switzerland, ATP 500. He just won it. He just beat Shelton in the final, 6-4, six, 7-6. Seven, six. He hit a second serve body serve, 135 miles an hour, that actually hurt Ben Shelton. It hit him in the wrist. This guy's serve is unbelievable, and he kind of does the New England Patriots that I like, which is on your second serve, go for it too. Fourth and inches? Yeah, we got the best quarterback, the best offensive line in the league. We're going to go for it. Yeah, I got, the best, I got one of the best serves on tour. I should be hitting two first serves. Long, 
long, long, long thought that if you have such an enormous serve, hit that second serve. What uh, versus what a twenty-five point rally that exhausts you? So check out Pechi Pericard. Very fun to watch. I want to go through him a little bit. Thirty-one in the world. On the year, he's fifteen and eleven. That's not great. I mean, winning record on the ATP Tour is great. Um, career high ranking right now, twenty-one years old, two titles, one point six million dollars. By the way, his career record is 17 and 14. This year, 15 and 11. He's been playing for a year. Does he play doubles? Doubles, not really. No. Um, 6 8. Turned pro last year. Right handed, one handed backhand. The backhand is a little ug uh, for sure. He's 21 years old. He's from France, birthplace Lyon. And. I mean, let, let's just go through who we beat in Basel. It's nuts. First of all, I have to find him in the draw, okay? First, he beat Duckworth, who qualified, 6-3. and three. Then he beat Felix auger Aliassime, the eighth seed, 6-1, 7-6. Then he beat Shapovalov, 6-7, 6-3, 7-6. Lost the first set, came back and won. Then he beat... Holger Rune, 7 6 6 4, fourth seed. Then he beat Ben Shelton, the sixth seed. So unseeded. Now he's 31 in the world. He just won an ATP 500. Huge serve. Very, very fun to watch. Comes to net. Um, I think he just beat Tiafo in Paris. Is there a way to search? Look at this. Serve. ATP stats. I never understand this. The serve is number one. Him. Pechi Pericard. Two Zverev. Three Berrettini. Four Herch Urkach. Five Sinner. So <laughs> I never fully understand this ATP stat serve thing. Um, he's He's been given a 300.1. The thing to pay attention to is he's number one on serve. Then Zverev, then Berentini, then Urkash, then Sinner. Those are some big fucking servers. The fact that Zverev is behind Pericard tells you a little bit about this guy's serve. Check it out if you haven't. Let's see what's going on with him in Paris. We'll go through Paris. But I kind of hate how they do the draw. All right, so he lost to Hatchinoff. But I think he beat Tiafo first round. So he was given a wild card, probably because he won Basel, ATP 500 at age 21. Insane. He loses the first set to Tiafo, then beats him 7-6, 6-3. Then loses to Hatchinoff, 6-4 in the third, which, by the way, Karen Hatchinoff, don't be such a Karen, Karen. Karen Hatchinoff does not look that good and is so solid and so good, and I would never want to play him and or be in a third set with him. I remember watching him beat Kyrgios at the U.S. Open. Years ago, front row with Trevor Noah. Thank you for the tickets, Trevor. Uh, and it was just like, oh, he just does everything great. He's not flashy, but everything is great. Back in return, great. Foreign return, great. Serve, great. Second serve, great. Fitness, great. So we are at the Rolex Paris Masters. Um, I think Sinner pulled out. Sinner pulled out which gave a lucky loser to, speaking of lucky loser, pre-order, michaelcosta.com. Actually, it's not even on my website right now. I gotta, Oh, yeah, I keep saying that. Uh, go to my Instagram, link tree, boom. Um, so in the Paris, Rolex, Alcaraz, second seed, Sonego qualified, uh, Let's see. Tommy Paul withdrew, right? No, he lost to Manorino. Uh, Manorino, what a night. Another lucky loser. Wild card Richard Gasquet. Casper Rude, seven seed. Medvedev loses to Poprin, seven six in the third. They missed this always. These, these are always another lucky loser. Um, 
It's always nuts this time of year because you got the year end championship coming up. So there's a few people playing hard to make that. They just came from Saudi Arabia where they made shitloads of money. They're tired. They're exhausted. It was an Olympic year. I mean, come on. Urkash, 12. Dimitrov is eight, trying to qualify. Rublev, six, lost to Serendulo. No, no shit he lost to Serendulo. That guy's fucking an un unreal. Uh, another lucky loser. There's like four lucky losers. Speaking of, pre order. HarperCollins.com or something. Musetti, 16 seed. Chilich, protected ranking, loses to Fis. Uh, Zverev, three seed. Fritz, five seed. Another lucky loser. How many fucking lucky losers are there? Alex D. Menor, 9 seed. Holger Rune, 13 seed. Wow, he dropped a lot. Fonini qualified. And another lucky loser. So, yeah. It, it, it's, it's This tournament, this time of year, always struggles with how hard are people really working trying to win this thing. Of course, you can win a shitload of money. Uh, but the next big thing is the year-end finals which is in 10 days it's just it's just a lot of tennis dude and then we got davis cup bah, 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 bah. all right women oh i was gonna say two things about uh pechi paraket's serve one toss it looks low it's high enough it's perfect no wasted height the higher you throw the ball the more perfectly you have to time it Check out his toss. Check out how often he uses the body serve. Huge, huge, huge user of body serve. Uh, really fun to watch that. All players should be paying attention to his actual racket hand, the movement he does with his serve, and how low, quote-unquote, low his toss is when actually it's just not obscenely high. Um, and also how often he's using the body serve. It, it, there really should be three or four targets on your serve in the deuce court you have out wide you have up the t and then you should have kind of a forehand body and a backhand body depending on where you want to go if someone is right-handed i used to love to try to go on their right hip same as when they're at net uh that's always a very tough spot uh for the forehand right-handed forehand to figure out um, I don't know what's happening with women, and I meant to. I know what's happening with Diwali because it's the Indian Festival of Lights. Uh, Zhang Wang secures gold and spot among the best. I don't understand what that means. We got Sabalenka one, Shviantek two, Coco Goff three. Big drop in points there. What's the tournament right now? Tournaments calendar. Boom. There's everybody's in Asia, 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 Asia. The next big tournament we have for the women is. Oh, shit. 125, 125, 120, 500 Guadalajara. That already happened. Then we go to October 1000 Wuhan, China. That already happened. I'm pretty sure 125, 250, 250 is all just just 500 Tokyo. That's happened. Happening. that already happened the next big thing is the finals in saudi arabia jesus fucking saudis so who won this tokyo this was a 500 and it was won by oh that's why okay good it was won by ready ready hello my name is king wang jen king wang jen 510 king wang jen, king wang jen 510 i've interviewed her Nice person, tall, beautiful, celebrity star. She lost. She beat Sophia Kennan. Hi, my name is Sophia Kennan. Sophia Kennan. Sophia Kennan, birthplace, Moscow, Russia, United States, 5'7". Nice to see Sophia Kennan in a final because she's definitely had her ups and downs. Um... Bianca Andreescu made the quarters. Not a whole lot to pay attention to here. This was, an, this was a WTA 500. Uh, yeah. So the next big thing for the women is the year-end championship. Do we do we know who's qualified? Do we know? WTA finals. 
locked in. Sabalenka, Sviantek, Coco Goff, Paulini, Rybakina, Pegula, Krechikova, Jinwang Zhen. I'm not trying to say that like an asshole. I'm actually trying to just say it. You know what I mean? Doubles, Krechikova's in. Doubles, is she in? No, she's not in. It's too hard to figure out. Taylor Towns in. All right. Paulini's in with Arani. How is Krechikova not in doubles? <sighs> what am I doing? Anyways, okay. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, register to vote. You can still do it. Vote. Just vote. Americans, just vote, okay? Um, I, I want to be very clear. I'm not anti-Republican. I am done with Trump, though, all right? Uh, I might be one of the only people at The Daily Show who's probably voted different tickets throughout their life. But I'm done with Trump. I'm done. It's too um, extreme. He's an asshole. Uh, he just caters to the masses. He doesn't care about this country. He's a divider. He's a promoter. It's just not, it's not, it's not for me. It's not for me. So say what you want about Kamala. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are excited about voting for her. There's going to be a lot of people that are just like, look, I just can't do Trump. I can't do it. And she's smart to reach out to those other people. Um, and I give you permission that if you live somewhere where people have a lot of Trump signs, or they talk brazenly or loudly about how great Trump is. That doesn't mean you got to do that. Do what you want to do. Do what you believe is right. I believe, say what you want about Joe Biden, I do believe our president should have a strong moral character and compass. Um, it's nuts. It's nuts. And I would just love for... Uh, the rhetoric to be toned down. And you know what I thought about with Trump? It was like, oh, you don't like that people keep trying to kill you, but then you go do this Madison Square Garden rally, quote, what was that? And I think, well, you know, it's this sucks to be on the Secret Service because the more extreme you get and the more divisive your rhetoric gets, the more they have to protect you. That sucks. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> what a way to end. Uh, this is Michael Costa. You've been listening to the Tennis Anyone podcast. Please leave a rating and a review. Please come to my show in Washington, D.C. Please, please, please help me catch the squirrel in the attic. Game, set, match. Costa.